Blessed Good Friday, everybody. Blessed Good Friday. We are going to look at a very beautiful <coughs> and powerful way that Jesus has invited us to share Good Friday with him. That is to come. We'll first look to God in prayer and worship. And thank you so much for joining me and my family here today. God bless you. Thank you, Almighty God, for this very special day. We remember what you did on the cross. Took all our shame, all our pain, our sorrows. But more than anything else, shame. And you set us free by what you give, by doing what you did. So we give you glory, honor, and praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who gave himself for us so that we can be forgiven, we can be redeemed, and that we can be saved. And you have saved us. Thank you. Thank you for even the gift of faith today because we believe in you. And everyone who believes by faith is saved. And what a hope we have. Eternal hope. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you this morning, this afternoon. And give you praise. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, thank you so much for what you've done. Welcome, friends, Shivani, Leche, Razan. Praise the Lord. If you're tuning in, leave a comment in the live chat or comment below. We're going to sing a song that's a classic. It's in the description. And if you know this song, please sing it with us. Please don't just watch us. Please sing it out loud. Um, or worship in the way that you can participate in this worship, otherwise it will make no sense. Some people come for the worship songs, some skip the worship, huh. but if we worship God with this song and the next song, the message will become a lot easier to understand and uh, God will speak to us even now as we're singing. So this song talks about the sacrifice of what Jesus has done. As you sing it, see the lyrics, meditate on it, and it's telling everything that we're going to talk about later. So get a head start, and let's sing this song together. Welcome, Alpha and Laptia, and God bless. You want to say anything? You said it. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice, you became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life, I'm in that place once again. I'm in that place once again. Once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life Let's sing about how he is now Exalted to the highest place, King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at your saving grace. I'm full of praise once again. Full of praise today. Yeah, I'm full of praise once again. 
To praise God in our midst of our troubles is a real sacrifice. But when we look at the cross and what Jesus has done, can you show that part of the painting? When we look at this, it becomes a lot easier to, yeah, 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 I will definitely also pour out my life with you. So we are singing, lead me to the cross. We didn't get to see that horrific sight. I don't know if we would have wanted to see that sight also. If there was an execution going on, how many of us would be like, come, let's go see the execution. But it is absolutely necessary for a Christian to go to the cross in order to be saved. Whether you like blood and gore or not, whether that hurts you a little extra than others or not, unless you see what happened, we cannot also take up our cross. We need that example uh, and we need to see him who was lifted up for our sins in order to be saved. You'll remember that story of um, the plague with Moses. I think they complained and they complained against the manna, was it? And then God said, uh, God sent fiery serpents as if snakes are not bad enough fiery snakes he sent among them. And so they all start, oh, no, no, we have, we have sinned. What do we do? So God tells Moses, make a bronze serpent, lift it up, and whoever looks at it will live. When Jesus came, he said, I am that, that sacrifice lifted up, and whoever looks at me will live. So we sing, lead me to the cross. Peter will start us off and we will join up. We have sung this, I have played this for her so many times. Is it because you like this song or what was Yeah, it is. Why? Yeah, because of Disha. I guess they'll know <laughs> by the lyrics. <laughs> what for you, yeah. what is it like that, that we've done this so many times? Um, oh my gosh, you're just making me talk. Um, I just, um, yeah, it's, even though you have to go through so much of that, it's fully of your <coughs> love to Yes, we are all weeping with you, kids. Yeah. It's getting okay. a minute. Yep. Think of what she said. I don't think we'd be able to not weep at what happened. 
and we thank God for his love for us. Without this knowledge, we will not be able, like I said, to leave everything. With this knowledge, on the other hand, we'll be so glad to not have anything else. We'll be so glad to count everything else as a loss for the gain of Christ.
cross when no one really wanted to be seen with you that day you're asking if we would be seen with you now oh god forgive us that we would rather have a festival of food and fun and games but we would not look inside to see where we are hurting for you to see where we need you to see where we really really long for you forgive us that we don't respond to our own spirit's cry for you o oh god our own spirit leaning crying out to you our own natures revolt against hell and sometimes we shut up our own spirit that is crying for you on a day like this very specially we pray that we will remember your story that marked history oh god we pray that you'll bless your servant as she you brings your word that um your word would would speak to us in a way like we have not heard it before and that we would understand what that cross meant to us personally lord that you would break through the barriers that we have built between you and us that we have tilted more to hell forgive us oh god break through oh god break through oh god in jesus name we we pray amen amen welcome once again thank you mom and thanks kitsi for singing that this painting is by mom by the way uh can i bring it closer oh oh okay <laughs> he's doing it let's see so it's a very heartbreaking image that we are looking at today um which if anyone doesn't know the story please let me know in the chat sincerely if you don't know the story actually please let me know i don't want to take it for granted um and if oh no and um what to say yeah if you see this later and don't know please leave a comment because we want everyone we want to know, make sure everyone knows why this happened just to be brief everyone has fallen short of the glory of god god's standard of holiness is extremely high i'm sure if you can even think of god whoever you are you would think of somebody extremely high and we kind of not worthy to reach that you know there's mortals and then there's god there's it's a big difference so what god did to bring us to himself because he loved us so much it said god loved us so much that he gave his only son gave him on the cross sacrificed him for our sins so that whoever believes in him would not perish for their sins but they would live forever he is our healer our redeemer our restorer our salvation what happened today on good friday is good because he paid our debt which we couldn't pay he bridged the gap which we couldn't bridge nobody could bridge it not the best person on earth could bridge it nobody was living up to the goodness of god he did it for us and so it's a very very good friday on a friday the savior of the world gave his life voluntarily for us humans and the voluntary part is very important because there are people in our country of another religion who say isn't it a very weak thing to do to forgive to die i had i made a video about how god makes me forgive and there was a person i think of another religion who said 
it's a very weak thing to forgive. No, you know, you should pay justice. There is that mentality. But just imagine that you're strong enough to push somebody. You're strong enough to call all the angels from heaven, 12 legions of angels, to fight on your behalf, and you decide not to. It takes a lot more strength to lay your life down for your friends than it does to fight against them. A lot more strength. And so Jesus willingly did this because he knew. John talks about this. I want to read that portion because it's so beautifully put. Let's go to, let's go to Monday Thursday for a second. We just finished Monday Thursday yesterday. And he did this on Monday, Thursday. I know it's on this side of my Bible. Yes. John 13. When Jesus knew that his hour had come, just imagine, you know you're going to die. That's where he was. And that he should leave this world to go to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended... The devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot to betray him, Jesus, listen to this, verse 3, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. Kitsy's smiling because she very sweetly did this for us yesterday. To my great shock. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, it was this knowledge that allowed Jesus to do what he did. He knew Sunday is coming. Easter is coming. Now, I don't want to dwell too much on this, even though this is what the day is for. I want to go to the part two of this which I think we don't dwell enough on. And that is in John chapter, I mean Luke chapter 14. <clears throat> there was a great crowd coming after Jesus. Just imagine in India, a person who could multiply bread and fish, a person who could multiply biryani, a person who could multiply kebabs, a person who could multiply naans and butter chickens. Just, just imagine, okay? Just go with me for a second and imagine somebody who can, out of almost nothing, out of one small baby's plate, multiply it for 12,000 people. Who's going to go after him? Whole country will go after him. Whole country is going to go after him. And then imagine this person also, if you just touch this hem of the robe, you just touch the edge of his shirt, if you touch the edge of his pant, you'll get healed from anything. doesn't matter. It's, um, it's COVID, it's fever, it's uh, advanced uh, lung issue, it's a brain damage, it's mental illness, it's a heart issue, it's... It doesn't matter what it is, you touch the end of his band, you'll get healed. What's going to happen to this person? Luke 14, verse 25 says, Great crowds went with him. And he turns and says this. I'm going to read straight from the Bible here. Luke 14, verse 26 onwards. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. You can't come after me just for the miracles and just for the food and continue to do what you're doing. He goes on to say, and whoever does not take up his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You can't just come after me going on asking for biryani. You can't just come after me going on touching the edge of my pant. Heal, 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 heal. Go sin. Heal, 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 heal. Go sin. Heal, heal, heal. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Sorry. If you want to follow me, here's what you have to do. 
Now, the first verse I read can sound very disturbing. Why would God ask us to hate when the second greatest commandment is to love? So you put these two together because God and Jesus talk way more about love than hate. This is one of the rare places he says the word hate. So if you put it together, it is this. The love that you have for God the Father and Jesus the Son has to be so much greater, so much higher, that you can't see the love of every, anything else in comparison. So he is not saying, give me first place and give your family second place. It's just him. The love that you have, the heart that you have, has to be full of love only for Jesus. Now here's what happens when you love Jesus. You will love people. Here's what happens when you receive God's love for your sinful self and you receive God's forgiveness and you become a son or daughter of Abraham. Have that same love for your family, your friends, unbelievers, people who are your enemies. But the comparison has to be so big that it's not a comparison. That there's no comparison at all. Now I want you to put this to the test of what you really love. Just think back in your mind, what do you get excited about? Who do you get excited about? Who, when you see, you start talking excitedly or your heart beats a little faster? Or when something happens, this can be a person, it can be a thing. It can be a thing like food or work or a promotion or a, um, something that you get followers or a gift, a car, whatever it is, money, extra money. Where does your heart lie? Where does the delight of your heart lie? You can learn a lot from where you get excited. You can learn a lot about the, the, the ways of your heart by observing when you get more excited. Is it with Jesus like, nimini, 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 nimini. and you talk about Jesus like, Nimini, nimini, nimini. Jesus died for me, and, and so, you know, a good friend is like this. And is it that when you talk about food, it's like, and this biryani, right? It was 50% off, right? <laughs> you can learn a lot by those things. Or is it that, do you know what, at my workplace, everybody stood up and clapped for me? By the way, it's Jesus, okay? It's Jesus. All just, but thank you so much for standing and clapping for me. You can learn a lot. I learned a lot about myself by the way I praised God for what I praised God. So if I say, yeah, thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice in Jesus. And also thank you for 10,000 likes on this. That is amazing. Then he reveals to me. So it's all about likes, is it? So that's where your heart really is. And I get so ashamed. But then, of course, he says, he shows a way out. You know, as, as soon as he convicts, he never condemns. I heard it said so beautifully. He'll convict, but he won't condemn. He'll convict you. It's like a doctor who says, you, you got cancer. Here's the medicine. You know, a doctor's never going to leave you with just the diagnosis. But Satan, what he does, he gives you, a, oh, you got cancer, you're going to die. And there's nothing you can do about it. That's Satan. What God does is, you got this cancer, here's exactly what you can do to be saved. You got this heart issue, and it's spreading all over your lungs, it's spreading all over your body, but if you will just turn to Jesus, and you will just trust me in your life, you'll be saved. You'll be fine. So I go to God with these things, and let him heal me. When I think about the cross and taking the cross, um, there are many of us I know from experience as well. One sec, let me breathe properly. It's all right. There, I think of it like a 100 meter race. A 100 meter race, we had those in school and the length of our field was 100 meters, and I loved running, though I didn't win anything, but I just love that feeling of the wind in your hair and everything. 
um, and it was very interesting. So think of it like a 100 meter race. And um, there are some people who are the spectators. They're sitting and watching. There are some people who are the starters. They start the race and come off and sit down. There are some people who, and I'm talking all Christians here, okay? All the people in this scenario are Christians. People I've seen, people I have been, and people I'm observing. Start the race, come sit down. Then there are people who are the halfway runners, I could call. They run half the race, so they run 50 meters, come off the field, go to another field, and run 50 meters, and think 50 plus 50 is 100. So I ran a race. And then there are those who run till the finish line. Now, the spectators are those who, surprisingly, they are in the field. So they are reading the Bible. They are praying. They are worshipping even. They're singing. Uh, but it is, it is not, it's not going past the surface. It's all mouth, ear, eye, but it's not going beyond the skin. It's not going inside. It's not being practiced in real life. So it's like reading the Bible. Yeah, I read my Bible. Let's go, let's go. Or, yeah, I, I'm praying. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Okay, now can I get on with pleasing myself? Or it's like worshipping. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, what is wrong with you? Your big head. You know, it's not, it's not affecting the rest of life. The legs are not moving. The actual life is not moving. These are the spectator Christians. And then we have the starter Christians. The Christians who, um, these are Christians who, if I could say, imagine a, a runner who just, the, the gun shoots for starting, and they do like one or two steps, and then they're smiling and coming off and sitting in the spectator seat. This never happens in a real race because that is stupid, right? That's not a race. The race is you go till the end. Now, whether you win or lose is another thing, but you go till the end. But these people, it's the first day Christianity or the initial Christianity where, oh, Jesus died for me, is it? Is it? Oh, oh if I believe in him, I'll get eternal life. Oh, okay, I believe in you. I repent, I get baptized and continue to go about your own day without taking the cross that Jesus asked. This is the people who have initial fire, initial Christianity and then do what they used to do, be who they used to be. But they're thinking because I did the thing, I'm baptized, I said the prayer, I'm going to heaven, yeah, of course. But the people who are seeing this and if you see this from the outside, you know that's not a race. You, you got to keep, keep, keep going. And then the halfway Christians, these are the, there's a lot of people as halfway Christians. These are the lukewarm Christians. These are those who are doing properly, they're running, okay, halfway. Leaving, running in another field. Does it work like that? In a race. Does it work like that? You can do half race here and half race there, add it and get a prize. No. So what does this mean? What am I actually talking about here? If you don't already recognize it or cannot already think of what this means, it is um, people who are sincerely reading, talking to God, worshipping from their heart. It's coming from here and then also have another love where you're also sincerely in the world. And there, there are two separate boxes. There's the Christianity box there's the Jesus box and there's the world box. So in the morning, I'll go here. In the evening, I'll go here. For many, it's even for half an hour, I'll go here. The rest of the hours are here. And thinking, because I'm, I have Jesus, I love Jesus. I am just doing what I have to do to earn money or to finish this college thing or to survive in this scene or this field, whatever that field is, whether it's school, college, exams, everyone is cheating in this way and I need to pass and I need the job, so I need to support my family, so I'm going to do this as well. God will understand. Or on the workplace, 
hey, I need, we need lots of money for my family. It's for my family. It's because I love my family. So, and the, the workplace is asking me to do this. So I have to obey my leader. So I'm going to do this corruption and so that I earn the money. But I love Jesus. I'm praying. This is the halfway Christian. I heard, um, and there are many, many examples, okay. I heard a, a beautiful testimony of a young boy who explained this situation so beautifully. He said, for so long, I was what I'm saying about halfway. And so because I was halfway, I neither enjoyed the benefits of being a Christian, nor I enjoyed the benefits of being in the world because I was not fully in either. So I had the tension of being a Christian, but also doing some wrong things. You're also guilty, so not in experiencing the freedom. And I also had the discomfort of being in the world, but you're also a Christian. So there's that weird, oh, he's a Christian. So I'm not able. So I'm still not invited to certain gatherings, and things like that because I, they know I have certain views on certain topics. So both ways I was losing, until I fully gave my life to Jesus. What he did is he took up his cross, and followed Jesus. Then you have the full runners, the finish line runners. These people are those. What they do is, instead of just starting, instead of doing it just halfway. They do it till the end. They do it day in and day out. There is no this and then that. There's only one way, Jesus. There's no other life. There's no compromise. Which do we want to be here? Because Paul writes, he uses a lot of athlete examples, and he says to us, don't you know that in a race, many run, but only one get the prize? Do you find any athlete who doesn't want to win? If you have an athlete who doesn't want to win, you won't have an athlete. Everybody on the field wants to win. That's why they're running. The problem is when the starter Christians and the halfway Christians and even the spectator Christians are expecting that they will get the prize just by being on the field. That just by being in the field, you can be in the finish line and get the prize. But Paul writes, run in such a way that you will get the prize. And we see the words of Jesus. If you're like, okay, what do I do? I'm, seeing a, I'm feeling a little discomfort right now. God is poking me here and there. This needs to go. This needs to go. As I'm speaking, I'm poked a little bit. Okay, this needs to straighten. That needs to straighten. What do we do? Because our brains are small. <laughs> our minds are not like God's minds. But remember what God said. I will give you a new heart and a new mind. And I will write my words on your heart. So you will know what to do. How can this be? Romans 8 tells us, I've spoken about this so many times, I'll repeat it. Instead of following your body, your mind, the world, the leading forces of the world, your, even your boss, even your parents. That's why the, Jesus said, let not your love even for your family be comparable to the love for me. When you follow them and not Jesus, um, you will be led to death, unfortunately. But when you follow Jesus, when you follow instead the Spirit of God he puts in you, the Holy Spirit we know him as, he will lead you to life. He will lead you with your family situations. He will lead you with your relationships, your work relations, your projects, your school, your studies. In every way, he will lead you. Do you realize that Jesus loved his mother, obviously, and he had to do this in front of her? And that would have been extremely hard. When Jesus was taken to be circumcised in the temple, um, this prophet met Simon, met her and said, Mary, met her and said, a sword will pierce your side. Your heart, is it? Your heart. And he's talking about this. Just imagine a mother witnessing her son going through something that me, as not a relative, except through faith, I feel seizures thinking about it. Imagine the own mother who gave birth to this son. 
witnessing this. Now, Jesus can only go through this if the love for his Father, God in heaven, is so much more than the love even for his mother. Because you think she would have allowed it. You think she would have been okay with it. No way. No mother could be okay with this. No way. Find some other way, Jesus. No way. I'm not, I'm not okay with this. And man, there will be things God may ask us to do that our family may not be okay with. And you have to know by reading the word and by a close relationship with God, where you have to fall with your family. Jesus had that beautiful balance, right? When he was a child and he was in the temple and he was doing a good thing and Mary and Joseph came and scolded him. Why were you? We didn't know where you were. You made a search for you. Don't ever do this, do this to us again. He didn't understand. They didn't understand. But it says he obeyed them. He went to them. He obeyed them. You have to know the balance where you will obey your family and where you will have to obey God and it may clash with your family. For those of us, I'm telling this for those of us who really love our family. Some of us have no issues disobeying our family, okay? I'm telling this for those who love their family so, so much that it would break our heart to go against our family. Jesus on this day most likely went against his mother's wishes. Hmm? Totally, totally. So he practiced what he preached. The love for the will of God was way more. Even, I would say, the love for us was more. And through what he did, it helped his mom too. It saved his mom too. Now, if he had, out of love for his mom, gone with his mom and not with God, in the end, she would not have been saved either. So what he did by following God ends up saving her as well. This is what I said a few services ago. When you follow God, it's actually the best thing you can do for your family, for your loved ones, for your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your workmates, your classmates, your colleagues, uh, your neighbors. It's actually the best possible thing you can do. They may not understand it. But if they do, if God reveals to them, if God grows that seed in them, if they happen to be fertile soil under some camouflage which you didn't realize, and they get saved, isn't it the best possible thing you could have done to take up your cross and follow God? Now, taking up our cross sounds nice now because now we have cross ne necklaces, cross earrings, cross accessories. And this reminds me of a very funny story, not funny, but animated story that J. John Cannon talks about in his channel. He said that he went to a supermarket. I'm going to try and convey this. He went to a supermarket and the lady cashing him, the cashier, was wearing a cross earring. And he says, oh, you're a Christian. And she's like, what? You're a Christian, right? He's like, what are you talking about? So he says, well, you're wearing a cross. So I put two and two together. You're a Christian. She's like, no, no, it's just nice. So J. John says, um, yeah, her name is Tracy. Thanks for reminding. He says, Tracy, what would you say? I'm gonna, he's a British. What would you say if I would wear a gas chamber on this year, the earring, and a gun in this. And she would, and she said, well, I think you lost it. So he says, well, did you realize that Jesus did not wear the cross on his ear or around his neck? He wore the cross on his back. You think I would have lost it because those are symbols of execution. But the cross is a symbol of execution. And I would say only the Christian knows what the cross stands for and knows that it's not just an accessory. It's not something that looks good. It's not a cool symbol. 
it's a symbol of death. So if we were to say, take up your cross in today's language, it would be like, take up your guillotine. I choose the word guillotine and not gun because today people are misusing guns very badly. But a guillotine is something someone else has to do for you. Like the cross. The cross, you can't do it by yourself. Someone has to put you there. You can't physically do that. So it's not a, ty- it's not a suicidal thing. It's you willingly giving your life for something more important, which is what Jesus did. And people murdered him, and he let them for a greater cause. Now, he's saying, take up your cross. He's not just saying, hold it. He's not just saying, wear it here. He's not just saying, put the earring. So we have to realize what Jesus said. And he said it very extreme. If you don't, you can't be my disciple. So there's no option two here. You either take your cross and follow me, or don't follow me at all. So what he's giving us is a death sentence. At the physical view, physically, it's a death sentence. It's a death sentence to your life, to your mind, your thoughts, your dreams, your plans, all your loves. What you find your favorite, what you dislike, everything gets to die. Now you may think, why in my right mind Would I ever want a death sentence? Because unless the seed dies, you don't get the tree. You think this just grew from nothing? You think this just one day? There was a seed that was planted in the soil and that seed died. Then the roots went in and the shoot came up. So unless you take your cross, you can't go to heaven. Unless you accept the death sentence of your mortal self, you can't get the immortal self. You can't say, I want the mortal self and the immortal self. I was listening to a conversation between Christians and ex-Christians, and I was fascinated that the ex-Christians still wanted to go to heaven. You can't get heaven, you can't get the Easter without the Good Friday. And you can't get heaven without taking the cross, the Jesus bow. Now, for all the people I said, "Mm, the spectators, the starters, the halfway runners, and including the full runners, what can we do now to make sure we get the prize? Because we are not here just to condemn and leave it there. We are here to help and guide in the way God has guided us to run for the price. To the spectators, I want to tell you, if you feel you're not a runner actually, and I'm not sure God is calling me to this, I want to remove that doubt from you and say, throw that away from you. God is calling you to take up your cross and follow him. Yes, you. And yes, it's a full-time job. It's a full-time ministry. It's a full-time life. It's all in. And yes, it's you. You may think, no, my family would never let me. My work would never let me. What did Peter and all do? They loved fish. They loved fishing. That was their job. James and John, father also is fishermen. They're carrying the legacy on. And if I'm not mistaken, fishermen was not like a low thing in those days. Right? It was one of the main occupations, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. But it's not talked about like a low status thing. You're fishermen, you're agriculture, you're this, you're They just dropped it. There's no plan 30 days and come. Drop and leave and follow Jesus. And you may think, no, I just don't have it in me to do that. I don't think Peter think thought he had it in him to do that, but he just did it. So if you're on the spectator, get off the bench, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. Now Jesus goes on to explain that, yes, this is going to take a little commitment making here. Because, okay, now let's go to the starters here. Maybe the starters didn't realize when they started and stopped that this is going to be a long time thing. 
That's why Jesus explains it. That's why we need to know the Bible. Because you, then you won't have these misconceptions that it's just a day one thing. Jesus explains that which of you, if you want to build a tower, will not first sit down and see, do I have the money needed? Do I have the materials needed? Do I have the equipment needed to do this? Or you will just start building. You will just start putting sandcastle upon sandcastle. No, no, no. You will sit and say, can I do this? Will I do this? To the end. If you don't, then people will, after you have laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to mock, saying, oh, this man began to build and was not able to finish. So to the starters, you will need to sit down and make this, this little assessment now. Am I going to go in this for the long run? And do I have what it takes to take up the cross and follow Jesus? I want to clarify, you will not have what it takes, but God will give you what it takes. That's one thing I've learned very strongly. God keeps asking me to do things that I think are impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. So I've learned to say, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but since you called me to it, that means you as my maker know that me plus you, I've literally written this next to me, <laughs> because these sermons can only happen together. My family knows I'm not a great speaker, nothing. It's only together we can do this. That's where you will put your hope. And I encourage you, keep running. The thing you had on the first day, put it on the second day, the third day, the fourth day. This is a continuous cycle of, Paul writes, well, I die daily. I'm daily saying, Lord, I repent and Lord, I believe in Jesus Christ. It's a daily giving up. It's a daily transformation. And it's a daily new life. So when you get this death sentence of the cross, you're also taking up a prize of salvation. And you're running in a new life as a new creation. You're not just the seed who died. You're now the shoot that is growing above the ground. And when you realize that, then the death will not be so terrifying. In fact, you will be like, oh, yes, let me die, let me die. Because <laughs> I want this to happen. I want this shoot to come out. I want to bear fruit. I want to be beneficial <laughs> in the kingdom of God. What did God say when he, not, not God, but there's this parable Jesus said, there was a tree that was not bearing fruit, a fig tree. And the owner came and said, why is this tree using up the ground? Simply using the ground and wasting it. Cut it down. And the assistant came and said, Master, let me give it a year, dig it around, around the tree, fertilize it, and then we'll see if it bears fruit. If it does, great. If not, then you may go ahead and cut it down. This speaks to us Christians in that if you're just sitting and watching everything, you're reading everything, you're just uh, listening to all the things, you're singing the song, but you're not bearing fruit, you know what God, you know what Jesus told the fig tree, right? Don't ever bear fruit again. And it just withered in a day. We don't want that, okay? How are you going to make sure you're a tree bearing fruit? All you have to do is keep the word of Jesus. Meaning, do the word of Jesus. Not just read. Do what it's saying. It's instructions. It's not just for your reading. It's not just for your eyeballs. It's for your nose, it's for your mouth, it's for your ears, it's for your hands, it's for your feet. But you will do it. You will surely bear fruit. Here's another thing. Um, I think of Christians who are very active in the church. They're doing all the activities. They are almost living in the church. Okay, But if, if you ask the people, how was your relationship with Jesus... They're like, um, uh, actually, uh, I mean, it's been a while. I mean, uh, I mean, it's not like I hear him, but I mean, I mean, but I'm like, I like the reading the Bible. Do you realize that the Pharisees were very active in the church? They were almost living in the church. They wore the things they had to wear. 
they were doing the law in the way they thought they had to do the law full time they were very dedicated in fact paul before he became a christian was a religious pharisee and he loved the law so what's going to make us different from the pharisee here jesus tells that the mistake they made is they read the scripture yes but they didn't realize who the scripture was talking about they didn't let the scripture lead them to jesus all the things we do activities bible reading worship going to church communion baptism everything even even using the gifts of god speaking in tongues and all these gifts all of it is to lead us to jesus all of it is to help us as we run the race to the finish line which is jesus so you have to let these activities do its job to lead you to jesus if you're reading the bible and god's saying uh, hey vihan how are you doing and you're like wait i'm reading the bible that's an example of what not to do god is going to interrupt you even while you're doing church activities <laughs> my mom is laughing her head off because i've done this to her as a teenager i remember so clearly i was reading the bible very dedicatedly very and then, and then mom came and said tia come here and i'm like wait i'm reading the bible <laughs> and i didn't even let myself think of the effect that will cause okay after hours hours she explains to me very and you know how mother may speak it's no use if you're reading the bible and rude to your own family as the bible says if you are if you hate your own brother whom you can see with your eyes how will you love a god who you cannot see how will you possibly love a god you cannot see so we have to do and this applies to all the the runners here um okay now i think i covered halfway runners in this talk as well and i will just address the ones who are running the race full time don't get discouraged my friends cuz what happens to the full time runners like even me i tend to look at wait a minute there are the spectator christians they have pleading popcorn and watching me run and they even judging me for running are i am a christian i am doing this 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 i am getting my money and this and why is she taking so much trouble eating the popcorn and watching me running and then i look at the star the christians are i am still running but those people they believe on the first day and now they went back and now they sitting and they join the spectators or Look at the halfway runners there's so many of them they run half in the going and they going somewhere else and they doing something else and they coming at the next day and again running and then they going then i don't am i doing something wrong <laughs> don't make the mistake of questioning it don't make the mistake of letting discouragement stop you and don't make the mistake of following backwards <laughs> don't make the mistake of following the world don't make the mistake Uh, because here's the thing in jesus eyes the christian is only the one who is going to the finish line there is no halfway christian for him there's no lukewarm christianity for him it's not defined under christianity for him i am just saying these words because there's so many people who are thinking that's christianity and it isn't at all he is saying very black and white you either take up your cross and follow me others you're not my disciple even romans 8 it's it doesn't say you can little bit follow your flesh then little bit follow your holy spirit then little bit follow the world then little bit follow satan then come back say sorry and all all over again it says only those who are led by the holy spirit full time are the sons of god full stop now i want to talk to the daughters a little bit don't ever think that because it says son so much because it says man so much and because some of the examples are like building a tower or cropping the field or you know very man related things don't ever think god is not calling you to this don't ever think because oh it's only the muscular men who can carry the cross don't ever think it's not for you don't ever think no i'm too weak for this no as a daughter i can't disobey my authorities 
as a woman i can't do this job that god is asking me to do i absolutely need the money i absolutely need to obey the world for so many different reasons and i'll tell you i know it's hard for a man and it's going to be hard for a woman but don't ever disqualify yourself by your gender uh uh-uh. uh because god no he doesn't look at us as uh as different he literally took the woman from the man they they are so one and so when it refers to men and sons here it's obvious for me but i think it's not obvious for all it is talking to both of us except when it specifies the distinctions between man and woman yes then there are distinctions of course but in general it's referring to both of us men and women as so i hope this is obvious for you there there are things like if you look at a full time ministry that can be daunting to women but i'll remind you that the verse is mentioned even though in that time they never wrote about women they they would when they say 5000 it's 5000 men i mean it's for granted it's taken for granted that's the way they write even then they mention women who follow jesus the women who saw the empty tomb first the women who were full time going after jesus the women who were supporting jesus with their uh, finances and the person i'm name after that demaris was a greek woman who my parents did study on who was named among the philosophers uh, which is extremely rare for a woman in that time and she left everything she left her status she left her job she left everything she left her high position and followed jesus followed this son of a carpenter because she saw this is salvation much greater than everything else so i want to just give that little encouragement to the women here you're in you're in do you want to be in is now the question i don't think no that cross is too heavy i will tell you that god gives more grace to the weak more strength to the weak and those who are more broken hearted he gives more comfort and to those who think now look i'm not sure how i'm going to handle this suffering i want to remind you that second corinthians chapter 1 talks about a suffering that is god given and he is also allotted a comfort and consolation in christ for those who suffer so if you are taking part of the suffering make sure you take the benefits of that suffering which is the comfort and consolation of jesus when i think of the disciples i see people who are happy to suffer let me give you an example if you had a very close loved one who was being unnecessarily beaten in front of your eyes would you stay on the side or would you just jump in and if you were beaten with your loved one would you be happy or sad for it at least you're together right say i don't like beating but my loved one is in this and at least i am sharing this with him or her and that is some sort of comfort that is a better comfort than if i am not taking part of this and i'm watching this happen as a witness and i'm not doing anything about it that is a greater misery than the comfort i'm receiving here do you get what i'm saying and so the disciples because they knew jesus so intimately when they suffered as jesus did when peter was taken to be crucified as jesus was he said i'm not even worthy to be crucified the way my lord was please do it upside down for me why because they understood it's such an intimate sharing and companionship to suffer what jesus suffered not that we will suffer what he did in that we will not be taking sins of others on ourselves we are not you know there's a big difference between him and us but to share in the suffering of our master even in a small way it should give us joy and so if you are looking at this it's making sense to you from afar but there are some things you're not sure of i just wanted to go to god today and talk to him about all those things if you have some confusion some doubts you can ask here also you can email us also but it'll be even better you go to god with with all those 
questions and those doubts and those like confusions and like okay i know i know i should want this but there's this thing that is making me not want it i encourage you to directly go to god with it and he will gently beautifully bring to your mind verses and uh lines and he will speak to you and he will get you to where he wants because he wants all to be saved so you can take these things to god and i will tell the people who especially those who think they are the full time runners the full way runners but are half way christians that's a very confusing spot to be in and many people don't know they're there so if you want to check where am i a great safety net is to always be with god because you cannot always be with the light and continue to have darkness just by the fact of being with the light he will wash you wash you wash you separate you from darkness separate you from darkness and you will be on the right path so i will just encourage you make sure you're keeping the word of god and the word of god says worship all the time this is one of the shortcuts i believe because when you worship god your relationship is beautiful and true however don't stop there because unfortunately today there's a lot of worship which is pagan in the church a lot of repeating jesus said don't repeat just like that don't think just just by repeating you'll be heard that's what pagans do there's a lot of worship to the wrong being which is not god or jesus in the church you you may know what i'm talking about which which is not even there in the bible because it's understood in the bible you have to worship only god and we see people worshiping jesus and jesus said i'm here to take you to the father so make sure you're worshiping god uh uh but if you are reading the bible also all these misconceptions and all these false teachings will be corrected when you read the word of god so even if your community is so well meaning in their worship or their prayer but they're doing it wrong when you read the word of god you will know the truth and the truth will set you free but don't stop there you can read the bible and still be an atheist pray the bible says pray always keep talking to god i cannot believe that there are so many christians who get so scared to go and talk to god why he didn't even spare his own son won't he not freely give you all things come by the blood of jesus people tell me no no i sinned again i can't face god again i already said sorry he already forgave me and i sinned again now how will i go back to god how did he forgive you the first time do the same thing god i'm sorry and i believe in your son jesus never let the sin become bigger than the grace of god because the bible says where sin abounds the grace of god abounds more whatever happens in your life never let it stop you from going to god because he is your salvation even if you have bitterness against god even if you have disappointment against god you can take that to god too it's better than going away from god and letting it fester and fester and becoming poisonous and end up killing you even if you have a poison even against god you go to him and say you are bigger to me than this poison i care about you more than this poison please help me remove this from my life and when you're also worshiping and reading the bible they all kind of work together you know they give you a right understanding of who god is and how you need to go to him and it just you'll be on the right path if you keep the words of jesus worship always pray always meditate on the word of god day and night that involves a lot of reading so you'll be you'll be fine if you are genuinely keeping these things not religiously but it is things that um it's a lifestyle let me say if you're a fisherman you just have to go to the boat and fish you can't be a fisherman in the concrete house 
You just have to do certain things. So I'm not saying this as a religion. I'm saying this as it's a lifestyle which the Bible asks us to keep. Who's ready to take up our cross? Who's ready to take up the death sentence against ourselves? If you're finding no motivation to do this, may I suggest, look at this. Look at this scene. He says, if I, your master, your teacher, have to go through this, how much more the disciples will? If a coach has to go through something, so will the team members. So will that sports team. If you're following somebody and they're going through a valley, you have to go through that valley too. But here's the great part. You have footsteps before you. You're not doing this alone. He's not just dead. He's alive. And he, with experience, is able to guide you today. How to walk this valley of shadow of death. What did David say? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear because... What is the thing? Because you are with me. You are guiding me. Remember? This is a very special day for my mom. Not that it's not for others as well, but... She has done so many paintings, as you can see. So much art, so much creativity revolving on this day. So I'm asking her to share. I know it's taken a while for me. Um, if you would like to hear more, my mom is going to share. Yeah, I've been so absorbing uh, everything that was being said today as if you heard it for the first time. Thank you, Vihan. Um, for me, the cross has fascinated me uh, even from when I was very little. Uh, I, I, I wondered why it was celebrated as a child. I wondered. As I grew, I wondered that it pulled me so much. Um, very dramatic. The best drama, the best movies, the best hymns. Um, I could not understand why it made me want to paint. I could not understand why it broke me so badly that I... Um, I wanted to be alone with the cross. Today, if I've understood very little, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the cross, um, it is that the cross challenges loneliness. The, 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 the how do I put this? Oh, I wish I had the words enough. I mean, sometime around this time, back, go back 20, 20 years, 2024 years, go back, sometime around this time. He's approaching Golgotha now. He is on the skull. Golgotha uh, means, means the skull. And they say that the skull of Adam was buried there. Um, I have not checked that, but it makes sense to think that is my skull, your skull. Everything within this thing, this thing, everything within our thoughts, under his feet. There is a very potent scripture that says, I think acts, in him we move and have our being. Take a good look at Golgotha and image that as your skull. He has got us. It is the biggest, most deadly challenge to hell. Hell is a place of absolute loneliness and many of us borrow it now and then. We rent hell on a daily basis. Now and then we rent hell. 
and this cross, that garden of Gethsemane, he has gone ahead into our loneliness. And I can challenge you based on my own life, and I have lived a bit here. If I have ever hurt alone, really broken, I found him there one step ahead of me. Hospital bed. Times of absolute, oh, your self-pity baking you left, right and center. But he is there. You want to find God, find him in the broken place. Let's not be so scared of the broken place. Why are we filling it with drugs and oh, all the feel-good things? Get to the broken place and you'll find him. His hand on your skull, his feet, his, his whole body. Look at the body language of the cross. It's like he's holding back hell from you. He's just holding back the things that ail you and me with those nails. Those nails. Those nails are just holding back my pain. Why is it so hard to see a movie like The Passion of the Christ? Maybe some things, uh, you know. But why is it so hard to look at blood? It, read Leviticus. It carries our soul. It's not to be taken lightly. It, it's, not, it's not some... Oh, Words fail me, Vihan. I, I, he has drunk our loneliness in the Garden of Gethsemane. Let's go to him. Let's not underestimate the power of loneliness and pain. Just go deeper into that pain. Go face your pain. What is, what is hurting you and me today? Just go nose dive into it and you'll find him sitting there and waiting for us in the place of the skull. That is the skull of the F of an entire earth dying. Like now, it's like a time like never before. Is Satan winning? I think so. You think so? So then he tells us, I'm winning. The biggest liar, just ask him to get go. Because look at that cross, look at the body language of the cross. He's holding Satan back from you. What is that thing that's hurting us so badly? Go into it and you will see the Christ standing there. He's, there is no place that is lo really lonely except that we go and dance with the devil. <sighs> but in the garden of the skull, in the hill of the skull, that's my skull and that's yours. Let's not anymore run from, from the grotesque from, from the, the painful thing, the lonely places. Let's go there. Let's go to our own hill of Calvary. Um, let's, let's just have a crucifixion. Let's put me there on that thing. And let me be the one also holding back hell for someone else. Why not? Why not be a baby of the cross? Yeah, wear it on our neck and wear it on our head and wear it how you will. Let's mean it when we wear it. What do you say? Let's just take a good look at the cross and you will come up with something better than I can ever give you. But it is, it is just, he, he is that friend we're looking for. Look no further. He's that friend that he just... He just drank hell on a, on a thorny little thing that they gave him. He says, I wanted, to, I wanted something to quench my thirst. <sighs> yeah, we turn into stammering fools. We will not be able to digest this thing. One day when we see him face to face, we will understand. And now we have the gall, we have the vinegar enough to stand here on the place where he died for you and me and say, no, I don't believe in God. The guts to do that. The one who died for you and me, whose blood ran for you and me. Go there. Look at the thing that's hurting you, the sickness, the pain, the betrayal, the wounds. He took those evil kisses. He took everything. He took everything. There is no one here on earth that he was not thinking of. 
when he died on that cross it was for you and me all the drama here yeah, for you thank you jesus so stilling and beautiful wow i want to say also for the halfway runners i didn't specify this thing the thing that you do that is halfway keep doing it <laughs> don't have a separate life and a separate part of your day and you may be like no what if i lose my job what if i lose my career what if i lose my future oh yes you actually asked to lose your life for jesus yes actually yes let's go because only when you lose your life you will what find it so we have this delusion of no 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 i'm keeping my life i'm just preserving my life i'm just preserving my family only when we lose it we will actually find it so if you want to have your life the best thing you can do is lose it praise god um i said all this today because i believe that a lot of us here know the story of good friday so well but it's as if that cross was only for jesus but do not realize that jesus said take your cross come join me and how many of us have such a love enough to say yes of course i will take the cross and join you because that's true love jesus said if you love me you keep my word and my father and i will love you and come and dwell in you what a beautiful beautiful thing i heard it said from a uh a, a a non believer who became a christian he said it wasn't the thing of jesus forgiveness that touched him the most it wasn't the thing of the cross or the resurrection that was so different from his um understanding of god what really struck him about christianity is the fact that god can live inside a human being it is really a beautiful beautiful thing that if we take up our cross and follow him you will find jesus nice and warm right here talking to you and you can hear him if you let him eating a meal with you hey he knows what we like sometimes he gives us great meals huh you you get some surprises along the way that you didn't think are part of the walk your cross path but you'll never know till you do it so how many of us are going to take up our cross till the end here yeah 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 tell me in the live chat how many of us rosan says pray i god helps me keep committed yes i'm going to pray that even for myself we may some of us may have to count the cost hmm i want to say yes but am i going to do this till the end if you need that need to do that do that yele che yay yeshwani taking the cross till the end i know we've already said this many times we've already committed many times but uh, i feel like for me at least i need this every day but yes yes lord yes i'm going to do this yes i need that every day daily refreshment and transformation and uh, renewal to keep going just like uh, the skin keeps renewing and dying and renewing and dying and renewing i need that to any that yes only two people la ah. yes chantal yes let us know in the comments below if you watch this later let's pray hey we need more of you saying yes i'm looking god is looking unless you want to take some time then ain't nobody gonna force you but if you're saying yes please share it in the chat and if you're not saying yes why are you not saying yes you don't want the prize there's a beautiful prize you know what it is in gold in the crown in the throne in heaven in the palace in the buffet it's jesus himself for real forever a great prize my friends yes cosmic luma well
Interesting name. <laughs> yes, anyone else? Yes, Harika, yes. Thank you for saying yes, because... Hey, it's fun, the more the better. <laughs> Don't let anything pull you back from this prize. It's for you. God loved the world. He didn't leave out anybody here. Anyone else, please. Don't let anything, don't let Satan hold you back. I'm going to pray now, but I'm feeling that there are some needing a little push and some holding back a little like, mm, not now. Hey, you remember that parable we just read, I think. There was this man whose life was going really well and his crops were doing so well. So he said, what am I going to do with all my wealth? I'm going to build some barns and store them and then I can eat and drink and do what I want. And God says, ha, 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 you fool. You're going to die tonight. Then what's going to happen if your big wealth? Who's going to benefit then? Don't put it for later, my friends. Yes, JC, yes. Don't put it for later. Even if I did myself, I think it's good to keep a renewal of commitments. Just like people in marriage have told me, they have to keep renewing their vows. If not with the ceremony, at least like day by day, yes, I made a commitment to my spouse, you know. I'm going to keep it no matter what. How much more with the bride of Christ and Jesus? So much more. Yes, I think we can pray now. My friends, I know this has been a long service compared to our other service, but um, I think it's like a very difficult topic and enough of the accessory cross Christians. Let's have more Christians carrying the cross on the back and going and like mom said, even if you're going to wear it, wear it like you mean it. You know, we need more of that. Because um, the Christians who are anything else, it's hurting Christianity in this planet. And it's not getting you anywhere. So we needed this change and it took a while to explain. So thank you for staying here. And let's pray now. Lord, we pray for all the spectator Christians to get off their seat and come jump on the tracks and start running. We pray for the starter Christians to continue running this race. We pray for those who are making the commitment right now and checking, do I have enough to keep going in this race? Is my commitment deep? Is it for my whole life? What do I need to do to commit for my whole life? I pray that you will help them in this process and you will give them that assurance that they don't have to fear, they don't have to worry, you're going to provide everything they need. You're going to help them with every single step, with every single practice, with every single warm-up, with every single run. With every move they make, you're going to help them. And they do not need to be worried about it. But see the examples of the disciples, how they just in a day up and left their work, up and left their families, up and left their, even their fathers and followed Jesus. Help us have that same um, commitment right now to leave everything, drop the net, even pun intended. Drop the net if necessary. Drop the phone if necessary. Drop everything else. Drop all addictions, all double lives, all love of money and love of people and every other love. And come running after you and never leave your side. I pray for the halfway Christians that you will um, clasp them on the tracks and not let them go and help them keep running on the same track and not have two different lives, not have two different faces, one for the church and one for the world, but have a consistency in their run. And that they'll have a real relationship with you when they don't want to leave. They don't want to go halfway. They want to stay for the whole thing. Thank you for those who have stayed for this whole service. And I pray, Lord, that people will be, even though this is the net 
and attention spans are so low, you help people go all the way. Whether it's a service or whether it's the Bible or whether it's a prayer or whether it's a worship song, you'll help us finish what we start, especially this race you've called us to. And I pray for the ones who are running full way. I encourage them, Lord. Let them not look back. Let them not go backwards. Let them not give up. Let them keep running till the last day you call us home. And then, Lord, I want to say thank you so, so much for what your son Jesus has done. We bless him. And we bless you for the love by which you sent him for us. With your strength, we know you will help us carry this cross and run this race. We pray for Lecce, Shivani, Shantil, Cosmic, Harika and JC who have committed in the live chat and those who have committed outside the live chat, in the comments, in the emails and those watching later who will commit. Thank you so much. We rejoice with them, Lord. And help them, Lord. We pray for ourselves that we would die to ourselves and have that new resurrection life which we'll be talking more on Easter Day. A new life of love, peace, peace with you. A supernatural new creation in Jesus Christ. May we enjoy this lot today. Thank you for this Good Friday. In Jesus' name, we pray for healing. We pray you set us free. You deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom forever and ever. Thank you for everything you've done, Lord. Amen. In Jesus. It's okay. It's okay. I was uh, looking at uh, the criminals. Uh, one was still mocking Jesus. He said, uh, if you are the Christ, save yourself and save us also. But the other, other criminal, he was, uh, he was in sorrow saying, this man, you know, we deserve for what we did, but this man was righteous. And uh, he says uh, he, one thing that, you know, to Jesus that, you know, when you go to your kingdom, take me, you know, I want to be with you. Jesus says, today you'll be with me in paradise. I think this criminal saw beyond the present shame and the coming glory. What faith. Yeah, he, he, he refers to Jesus saying, Jesus. That means this guy knew Jesus from afar and put his faith in him to say this sentence. I want to leave that line with you all. Let us receive the benediction. <coughs> the amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the extravagant, incredible, overwhelming love of God the Father and the intimate friendship, association, and participation and company of the Lord Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Blessed Good Friday everyone. God bless. Amen. You guys, I forgot, I wrote a little bit of a song that I would like to sing to you as we, as we take up our crosses. And uh, I wrote it while reading the book of Numbers, which we did last month, where the people were so scared to talk to God that they, when they heard God's voice, they said, please don't talk to us. Can you believe they said that? Please, you talk only to Moses and let... Let Moses tell us what you said, but you don't tell us. And that hurt me so much, even though God said, yeah, it's right what they're saying. I just thought, that's so sad that they had this incredible opportunity. And they said, no, God, don't speak to us. Um, but then God reminded me that 
such a better opportunity is there today through what Jesus did. Jesus can live inside our heart. We can speak to him all the time. And why aren't we making use of this amazing gospel? So I wrote this song from that place. It's called, uh, no, I don't know what it's called, but for now I've called it Bring Us to Salvation. So, if you would like to support us, there are giving details in the description. And have an amazing, amazing Good Friday. Today we talked about the seed dying. Sunday will be more about the shoot coming to life. So, looking forward to that. God bless you. Yes, we're having a... We are putting a Little Lights video in a few minutes, so check it out. It has a lot of what my mom shared, actually. I don't know if you intentionally did that, yeah. but it's such a beautiful original story that she wrote, so check it out. God bless. The story of the hill.